Welcome to Fashion Masters Q&A with DNQ, episode five, understanding fascia and weight loss. Hi, my name is Deanna Hansen. I'm a certified athletic therapist and the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy. And my name is Quinn Castellane. I'm the VP of Block Therapy and the lead block therapist. This is probably one of the most relevant topics for people, especially women and me included. I used to struggle with understanding how to keep my body in a proper healthy size. Mm -hmm. And what was really frustrating for me is when in my 20s, I was going through athletic therapy and I learned all the rules of weight loss. Not that I didn't understand them before. I mean, I came from a, a family where dieting was really typical, mm -hmm. which actually created probably a lot of problems yeah. as I've learned today. So in my twenties, I was really struggling. I was working really hard. Here I am in athletic therapy and you know, it's, it's the faculty where you're supposed to be fit and I'm applying everything that I'm learning. And yet the harder that I work with my body, the bigger I'm getting. And it seemed like I was storing all of my size and weight primarily in my belly area. Mm -hmm. So I hated that area. I never touched it. I avoided it. I just, I felt shame. I, I couldn't stand it. And you know, when you go to the gym and you're working really hard, I was doing weights, yoga, Tai Bo, all of these different things. And yet I was getting bigger and here I am seeing these, these people working out and they're looking toned and fit. And it's, like you feel like a failure. Yeah. It was just an awful sensation. And so it was really profound for me when I was 30 years old, when this whole journey began for me, it actually started with an anxiety attack. And in that moment, I dove my hand into my belly. And this was a foreign sensation for me because again, I avoided this area. But in that moment of my anxiety attack, the first thing I encountered was pain. And I was quite surprised with how much pain was in there but it also brought me to a place of calm. It took me out of my anxiety. Secondly though, what I observed in the moment was the fact that my tissue was full of what felt like scar tissue, mm. even though I hadn't had any injuries or surgeries there. And suddenly I was having these aha moments like, okay, I'm coming home from a five mile run dripping wet with sweat, yet my belly still felt cold. Mm. So suddenly I thought, well, no wonder it's not changing. There's no blood flow getting to this tissue to metabolize it. Yeah. So it was really amazing because the first night when I was working in my tissue, it was because it was making me feel calm from that anxiety attack. When I got home from work that second day, I was excited to explore again because I felt calm all day. And after that second night of just intuitively working in my tissue, when I stood up, I started to cry when I saw myself in the mirror because mm -hmm my belly looked flatter than it had looked in years. Wow. And I'm talking years of 400 sit-ups a day. And again, all these different ways, including dieting. I was gonna mention dieting because yeah. you, you did extreme dieting. I, I, well, yeah, which actually, <laughs> as I know now, was the opposite of what I should be doing, but I yeah. absolutely did. Mm -hmm. So I learned that this marbling of scar tissue was really the culprit for a lot of what was going on. Now, don't get me wrong, not that eating isn't important. Of course, what we feed our body matters, mm -hmm. but there's more to it than just what we put in our body. It's also how we breathe, how we use our posture and how we need to understand the fascia system to truly keep our body healthy in its size and shape. Exactly. Because there's the two main components that we're taught or that we understand, which is again, the exercise component and the nutritional component. Yeah. But again, there's a third component. There's a complete missing component. There's actually you, two more that I see. Two, okay, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you keep well, going. <laughs> well, no, and, and I was just gonna generalize it more so with the fascia system and just understanding how crucial that is for health. Like again, we mentioned breathing in pre previous episodes, posture alignment, but everything works together as one. And when we understand the fascia system, you understand that that's seriously a missing link in our health in our weight loss, in our size, in our shape, with everything. And it really comes down to compression and ballooning. Yes. And the resultant toxification of the cells that are being blocked from blood and oxygen flow. So in the last episode, we were talking about proper foundations in the body. And in that rib cage core section, it's the diaphragm muscle that supports 
the alignment of the rib cage and also that feeds the body 600% more oxygen when we're breathing properly. But there's more to it than that because again, the diaphragm as this foundation, it supports the structure. If we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, as most people do when we're not conscious mm -hmm. breathers, now the foundation of the rib cage, the diaphragm muscle is weak. Yeah. And if it's weak, it's not going to hold us up in proper alignment. Exactly. So we fall in. And when we fall into that core space, the tissue has to go somewhere. So it balloons outward because it has nowhere else to go. So compression and ballooning, in my opinion, is of equal, if not greater yeah. importance in our size and shape. 100% agree. And people notice that as we age, it gets harder to lose weight as we get older. We basically get shorter and wider. And the reason it's harder, it's because it's not about food. It's not about exercise. It's about alignment mm -hmm. and feeding our cells what they need as well as keeping those cells clean. So when we have compression blocks to blood and oxygen flow, we also have a dirty environment. And what the cells do with toxification is they expand. Yes. So people, you know, they often wonder, you know, I don't eat that much yet. I'm really large. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason mm -hmm. it's because they're toxic. Yes. So what's really cool with block therapy is we get into the tissue. We create that release of that compression so that we can start to realign ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then through the pumping of the diaphragm and the working of the block, we allow those systems to flush out the toxins so we become cleaner. And when our cells are fed and clean, basically we're aligned properly, everything is doing its job and our systems flow. And as long as there's flow, we're eating and we're eliminating. We're eating and we're eliminating. Yes. But more importantly, let's talk about that study they I did. I was just going to mention that, that was running through my head. So the medical news, 2014, I believe this study was, was done. It, they literally stated that 84% of weight loss comes through proper breathing, primarily the exhalation phase of the breath. So first of all, just to understand that, a lot of people might think, okay, hey, that's kind of hocus pocus, there's no way, but it totally makes sense in our eyes because breathing is nearly everything. So if you're not exhaling fully and you're not breathing properly, then you're toxic and you're building up that toxic toxicity. And if we're inhaling more than we're exhaling. We're only building up more junk and garbage in our lungs, in our body. So again, we always talk about how crucial the exhalation phase of the breath is. And again, somebody can say, take a breath and you're gonna focus on the inhalation. But when we talk about taking a breath, we wanna exhale fully first to take all the toxins out of the body so that we have more room for oxygen absorption. And the reason that diaphragmatic breathing is so profound, you know, we, I, I think we talked about this in one of the other episodes where it's not like we're taking in 600% more air into our lungs. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. It's all about absorption and where those alve alveoli reside, the oxygen receptor sites. And they're essentially at the base of the lungs, 70% of them. Yeah. So if we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, we're not bringing that air deeply enough into the lungs a to absorb oxygen and if we're not exhaling fully and properly all of that garbage is settled mm -hmm. in there and it's not being released and that's ultimately what keeps us toxic so with block therapy being able to get into that tissue release the compression focus on that full exhalation to move the toxins out of the body that creates that cleaning process and you know for somebody myself who has suffered I'm past it now, thank goodness, <laughs> with constipation my whole life. Mm -hmm. You, f I mean, absolutely, that is part of what will add bulk and ballooning in the belly. But, you know, for people having healthy bowel movements, I mean, the average person might take one or two a day. Mm -hmm. But we're breathing always. Yeah. We're always exhaling. Mm -hmm. So with every full exhalation, we're moving toxins, negative everything in the body like all the dirt all the garbage even the emotion mm -hmm. we're moving that out of the body with that full conscious exhalation to keep our system clean 24 7 and that's how profound it is it's it's the constants that add up yes so when we have that full exhalation as our general everyday way to breathe we are constantly keeping ourselves clean. Exactly. And, and then it's easy to stay in a healthy alignment. Well, exactly. And, and it's, it's a weird concept because we don't physically see our breath. And we're all about that, right? We're yeah. all about seeing how much water we're drinking, um, what food we're eating, waste that's being removed from the body. But again, as you mentioned, the breath is first. And then still, toxins can leave from the skin. It can leave from in 
leave in all different kinds of forms, but primarily it's the breath. And when we understand that, it's amazing how fast your body's going to change, but you need to understand the breath. Um, even for myself, being into bodybuilding, watching people compete, some people can drop weight like this, mm -hmm. some people can't, and they are doing the right things because they are in a caloric deficit compared to the energy expenditure. So if you are burning more calories than what you're taking in, technically you should be losing weight, but that's not the case for everyone. And that's just what we explained, how important the breath is, the posture, the alignment, because that all contributes to weight loss. Well, and also let's just talk about the fact that when we're breathing diaphragmatically, we are exercising this mm. incredibly large, powerful muscle in the core. So that is what's going to shape your core. Again, for, for me who used to do 400 sit-ups a day, I was only targeting the anterior abdominal muscles and I was forcing my body to compress under that repetitive concentric contraction, mm -hmm. which created more compression and ballooning as well as more constipation. So again, I'm getting bigger. I'm working my butt off and I'm getting bigger. And that was not my goal. When we work the diaphragm muscle, which you don't see. So again, because we're so visual, yeah. we'll go to the gym and we'll work certain muscle groups. But when you work your diaphragm muscle, you are giving your whole body an incredible workout. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, heating up the tissue, heating up the cell so that blood and oxygen can flow freely and remove the toxins most effectively. So understanding this will be huge for you lifelong in understanding how to maintain proper size and shape. And of course, yes, we want to pay attention to what we put into our body. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's understanding clean eating. Yeah. You know, ultimately, totally. you know, we, we have to learn through time what feels right for us. There's no one prescribed diet that's gonna mm -hmm. work for everybody. Mm -hmm. So as we do block therapy, we, be, we become more aware of what our cells are saying. Yeah. It took me a while to realize I don't digest meat well. Mm -hmm. So I would be eating steak and burgers and whatever, and I just became a blocked mess. And when I started to connect the dots that, wow, this isn't a good food group for me. Mm -hmm. And I started to eliminate that from my body, things improved. And I'm still learning about my body. We'll never stop learning about our body. And that's the fun part about it. it. That's the, the cool part. part. There's, there's no end to it. So you just keep learning, keep improving all the time. That's what I, yeah. That's why we're so addicted to this. Well, yeah, because it's not about, it's not about an end. It's a lifestyle. Yes. And constantly evolving and improving. You don't know what's around the corner until you kind of turn that corner and then you see a whole new world yeah. of changes that are only going to enhance your life that much further. Absolutely. So for me, yes, weight loss was a big thing. But now there's so many other things that I use block therapy and this work for, and I'm just so thrilled mm -hmm. for the last 18 years of my life. I have changed immensely and I'm so excited to continue to change because yeah. I have so much further to improve and evolve. And I love that part. Totally. And, and just to generalize, um, the, the diaphragm and how important that is, let's also just briefly talk about the organs and, and digestion because the diaphragm muscle is a plate of muscle that acts as a pump in the body. So it moves up and down. When you inhale, it comes down in the body. When you exhale, it fights the force of gravity. So if it's this pump in the body, which resides just below the heart and the lungs and above the abdominal organs, then you're m gently massaging each organ so that it can be at the proper temperature to function optimally. So if the stomach organ is working better because it's heated and then you can digest, break down the food more efficiently, absorb the food more efficiently. And then as we mentioned before, eliminate as well. And there's so many factors that come into play. Like going on a scale is not the way to do it. No. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that because there's so many factors to weight. Um, so it really comes down to body composition and how you feel, how you look, and that's ultimately understanding your weight. Absolutely. And like, thank you for bringing that organ piece up because that's, I mean, we could have so many conversations about this, but for example, your liver, it's an organ to help cleanse the blood. It has many functions, mm. but fatty liver disease is on the rise. Mm. And the thing is, Fats, if you take butter at room temperature, it's a solid. You melt it, it's a liquid. Liquid is flow. Yeah. Solid is not. 
So when the fats are in the liver in solid form, that's blocking the liver's ability to do its job. When we are breathing diaphragmatically, we are giving that mechanical movement to that organ to help break those fats down and heat it up. Similarly with the gallbladder, the pancreas, the organ, the islets of Langerhans, the, the organ responsible for controlling blood sugar, that needs to be supported through proper breath because we need to heat these organs efficiently in order to send blood and oxygen flow. Yeah. So if we don't, that's not going to be as, um, as well controlled and that will create metabolic disorders. So understanding how significant this muscle is and proper function of this muscle for again how we look and how we feel in general it's it really is the key and last point before we wrap up this episode so we were mentioning collapse and ballooning yes so let's actually talk about briefly the fat cells what actually happens to the fat cells so when we collapse they balloon but a really great analogy for you to understand is literally a balloon <laughs> you have a balloon, let's say a half-filled balloon. Now let's say you squeeze one end of it. What happens to the other side? It gets bigger, it expands. And that's what's happening to our fat cells when they're under pressure. So if we're collapsed and we're under pressure, the fat cells are also going to be, also going to be ballooning, but it's not just the fat cells. Nope. And I'm, and I'm glad because I knew you are gonna correct me on this <laughs> one. <laughs> it's all of our cells. Yes, it everything is. Everything is. Um, so actually, if you can briefly explain that, like how it's everything, it's not just the fat cells, like when we're under pressure, we're expanding, we're ballooning. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about it, um, the fascia innervates every single one of our hundred trillion cells, as we mentioned in the first episode, mm -hmm. it really is the cell membrane connecting every other cell membrane. So we're, we're not identifying just the fat cell when we're under compression. It's if, if I'm collapsing into my core here and I'm squeezing everything over to the right, I'm, I'm moving organs, I'm mm -hmm. moving muscle, I am moving blood vessels, nerve fibers, uh, fat cells, skin cells, everything. Everything. Like Literally everything gets everything. caught in the collapse and everything ends up ballooning. Yeah. So it's not just fat. There's only two times in our life when we increase the number of fat cells, when we're babies and at puberty. Otherwise, if our size changes as we age, it's from that compression and ballooning. And yes, if we eat more calories than we are working out of our body, that's just going to add more ballooning, yeah, more, exactly. um, more increasing of all the cells in size. Totally. But compression affects every single cell. So, um, you know, for one of the things that women typically undergo is because we have more fat than men mm -hmm. is as we get older, we often find that the inner thighs rub together mm. and we feel like, well, our legs are getting fat, but that's not it. It's the fascia that's migrating. It's, it's fascial displacement mm. that's causing those inner thighs to be thick because of incorrect posture and alignment. So again, when we talk about block therapy, it's understanding there's three parts to it. Releasing the compression, feeding those cells proper oxygenation, and then owning correct alignment so we can move those cells back to where they're supposed to be. And if every single one of your 100 trillion cells are exactly where they're supposed to be, then our body is as it's designed to be in function and form. Awesome. So if you want to start changing your posture now to understand where you're supposed to be aligned to start managing your own weight, visit unblockyourbody.com. You'll be able to actually download your own 20 minute posture video yeah. <laughs> gift program that, really program exactly and yeah. we talked about the three foundations yeah. um, so again unblockyourbody.com if you have any questions that you want us to answer please use the hashtag ask block therapy on any social media platform if you like the video and you like this channel and you want to see more of this content make sure you subscribe to our channel give this video a thumbs up and then of course you can comment any questions you have below so until next time We'll see you then. Breathe and believe. <laughs>